Hi, this is Hank Hennegraff. Uh, I, I want to report to my friends what's going on with me uh, physically. Um, a lot of things going on in general, but I in particular want to communicate uh, some of the updates on my health. Uh, I was in New York taking a cab with my son David and my wife Kathy uh, to a hotel in Manhattan. And as we were traveling, I got a call from my doctor, the oncologist, and uh, he told me that I had tumors throughout my entire body. He started talking about tumors in my neck, uh, under my armpits, uh, in my lungs, in my uh, stomach. And uh, the more he talked, the more vacant I felt. Uh, at the time, I had no frame of reference whatsoever in terms of what that meant. All I knew was tumors. Uh, I, I should have known that. I mean, that's part of having uh, uh, the, the, the kind of leukemia that I have. Uh, so I, I probably should have been aware of that, but I wasn't. And it hit me again with the force of a sledgehammer. I thought, how, how can this be possible? Tumors everywhere. When I got my physical just a month ago, no one was telling me about tumors everywhere. They were simply telling me that uh, I had to have a bone marrow biopsy and uh, they found that I had problems, bone marrow suppression and so forth. And, uh, and, uh, but, but, but now the reality is really setting in for me. And so I have to admit for a while, I, I, as I just said, I, I had sort of a vacant feeling about it. Uh, but fortunately, I have a doctor uh, from the Cleveland Clinic that happened to give me a call. Uh, he doesn't want me to call him doctor, just Brother William. And uh, he started giving me some perspective. He had seen the reports and he said, Hey, I had dinner with uh, a guy that was diagnosed with the same thing that you have, a mantle cell lymphoma. And he was 59 years of age, and I just had dinner with him. He's 71 now. So he gave me a little, he said, just chill out uh, and gain some perspective. Uh, yeah, you got a rough road ahead, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and, and of course, as a brother, he was giving me a biblical perspective on how I should uh, view my circumstances. Since that time, I've had so much encouragement, and, and, and I want to just tell you in this vlog the biggest encouragement. I was at church, and uh, after church we all eat together, and as we're eating uh, the noonday meal yesterday, a lady walked over to me, and she bent over and started explaining her situation. Now, she's a very special lady. She's got 10 special needs children that she adopted, and my family has befriended them. And they were sitting, some of those, those kids were sitting with us at the table, and my kids were loving on them and having interactions with them. But she bent over and she started talking to me. It's the first time I actually met her. My wife had gotten to know her, but it's the first time I met her. And she said, Hank, I had the exact, in fact, I have the exact same situation and circumstance that you have except mine was a diagnosis. And, and, and now I don't remember all the details, but she said in her late 60s, she was, was diagnosed. And um, so she had to go through this regimen of chemotherapy uh, to, sh I guess, melt the tumors. Uh, I don't know the best expressions for that. Maybe Friday I'll get some of the terminology in my head as well. But she went through all that same thing uh, to melt the tumors to, uh, uh, to bring them into uh, recession mode. Well, that took a long, long time for her. And the reason was that she was actually allergic to some of the chemo. So what would take uh, an average person, maybe six, uh, well, something like uh, six hours uh, to absorb, took her much, much, much longer. At any rate, she said to me, Mother's Day, yesterday, this is my third anniversary of being 
in remission and I feel great. And she looked great. Now, she, I think, is a little older than I am at this point, but she looks a lot younger. I mean, she just looked fantastic. But the thing I remember her saying, and, and the thing that meant the most to me, is she said, you know, there's a C in cancer. It's one size, but there's a much bigger C, and that is Christ. And then she told me something I never thought I'd hear from someone that has mantle cell lymphoma. She said, Hank, I would not replace my experience. It was tough, but I would not replace it for anything. In fact, she said, I'd go through it all over again. And the reason is probably something that I'll experience if God does not supernaturally heal me. The reason is, is that she found an intimacy with Christ that she had never, ever experienced before. Now, of course, I'm talking to a lot of people right now, and every one of you is terminal. I, I oftentimes say uh, that the death rate is one per person. We're all going to make it. And the worst is still the best because we're looking forward to resurrection. But I have optimism in my heart at this point. I'm still cloaked in this mantle of, of uh, peace. I have optimism that God will give me years to continue to do his work. And that's, that's the one thing that is primary in my mind. Only when life soon will be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And one of the things I'm already experiencing is uh, the reality that I don't want to waste any moments. Uh, I don't want to just frivolously watch television or do this or that. I want to make every single moment count. Because remember the words of Jesus. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt where thieves break in and steal, but rather lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So this is a really important thing that our Lord is teaching us. He's teaching us to have our treasure in heaven because if we do, then we'll order our life around the divine. If our treasure is on earth, well, we're bankrupt no matter how many zeros we have behind our name. So this is uh, a short update on uh, my, my, my latest uh, information on, on my particular disease. And uh, again, I am deeply, deeply grateful for, uh, and I'm here not using any hyperbole, the tens of thousands of people that are letting me know that they are praying for me. I do not feel worthy for this kind of attention, uh, but I guess over the years I've touched the lives of people and now they're reciprocating in a very uh, specific way. Please continue to pray for this ministry. I love this ministry. This ministry is making an impact, an impact around the world. Pray for the ministry of the Christian Research Institute. And if you can, stand shoulder to shoulder with us in the battle for life and truth. Well, it's Monday. And uh, yesterday was Mother's Day. Tonight, the Bible Answer Man broadcast. I'm hoping this week, as God gives me strength, to do some more Facebook uh, Live and uh, continue to communicate with you in, in, in the many ways that God is opening for us. A lot of avenues for, uh, for ministry that God has just made available for us. So again, pray for us. And remember, I am praying for the people as I read all the comments that come in. I go through them and uh, I, in turn, uh, praying for those that are praying for me. What a beautiful uh, situation we have within the body of Christ as we deeply care for one another. So long for now. Don't want to make this blog too long. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be communicating with you towards the end of the week again. I'm meeting with my uh, team of doctors. Uh, I haven't met them yet, but there's a team uh, that I'm meeting with and uh, figure where, where we'll go from there. Peace in my heart and a great hope for tomorrow. And I love you and thank you for your prayers.